And I think it's pretty important for not just the husband to know, hey, it's okay to not be the strongest man in the world, and then vice versa. But also, we need to remember the kids need us too, because、mm-hmm. when they see us struggling, they're confused. They don't know what to do because they're supposed to look up to us. Like、yep. if we break down, what are they supposed to do? But turn out the kids turn into our best support system. Welcome to another episode of the Deeper Than Dough podcast with our guest Keith Huang. Yes, welcome. Nice to meet you,、so、Keith. So glad to have you. Yeah, nice to be here.、Um, give us a little bit of your background. <laughs> well, my background. Let's see where we start. My background. Well, let's go from most recent and then count all the way back. The most recent thing is、um, I started an online art education. Why are you、platform? going backwards? Just keep save, going. <laughs> save the best for the last, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. If you know accounting, there's first in, first out, last in, first out. But oh, painful! Don't bring that up. Come、there. on. <laughs> but okay, let's get that. That gets more interesting. So the first thing, most recent, is the art education platform called Centian Academy. Okay. So that's、um, we started that in t- 2019, and before that, I was the sales controller at Advanced MD, is a medical billing SaaS company. And before that,、um, I was leading the revenue recognition team, progressive leasing. And before that, I was running the Salt Lake Ally division finance for CHG Healthcare. Now the last thing is I spent six years down in Mesquite running the accounting and finance team for the casinos down there. So if you ever been to Casablanca, Virgin River, Oasis, and you ever put money in the slot machine on the table, hotel, bar, spa, golf course, bowling center, retail, events, whatever, you track. I probably、money. see your number come through. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of what I did backwards. So can you tell? Me the chances that I'm going to lose money and how much money I'm going to lose if I place it. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about that. You, you talk about slots, right? Okay. Did you know, slot machine, the player has over ninety percent of the chance to win. To win. Yes, to win. The player ninety percent of the time, the player will win. Hmm. So you're like, I've how does that work? Slots, so yeah, I don't. Well, how does that work, right? That's because we bet on after you win, close to a hundred percent, you put your money back in. No,、mm-hmm. and that's how we get your money. Because once you win, and、so、you always win, so it's tons of little, put, tiny, small wins. Yeah, it's the tiny, small wins. But we always know that you're gonna put the money back in. Do people because, take money off, or they put it all back in? Well, you put money in, right? And then、yeah. when you win this first round, the money stays in there, and the money always stays in on the, unless you hit cash out.、Mm-hmm. But because you are always winning. Ninety percent and above, right? You feel like you are always winning. You are always gonna bet on the next hand and think that you are gonna win. So sneaky. So most、I、of the, I mean, how much are you betting at a time on a slot machine? Depends on there's penny machine, there's dollar machine, there's whatever. So I throw in a buck. I have a ninety percent chance I'm gonna win a dollar back. No, it, win whatever it is, right? Like is it, it could be like, a little thing, it could、okay. be a big thing. But most of the time, you don't put a buck in there. Usually, you put in a five dollar, you get. Five dollar credit, and then start、yeah. drawing it down. But then you kind of see it go up. Be like, "Ooh, I'm gonna win a lot more!" Because every time you just miss that seven, 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 you miss just a little <laughs> bit, and you just、yeah. keep it in there. And then next thing you know, your five dollars gone. You put in another five dollars, and just keep going up and down, up and down, up and down.、Um, so if you do, you gamble? Me? Yeah. I seal the number, so I can't. <laughs> I cannot touch it because I know which machine to hit. So no. So no.、Yeah. If you were to gamble, what? <laughs> Great. <laughs> machine or blackjack or what? What are you gonna play? Well, what's got the best odds? If I have to, <sighs> slot machine is controlled by the software, and we have the dial in the back. We can dial it up and down, so it's totally controlled. So you by, see the numbers. Yeah, so it's controlled by that. So、yeah. your odds is pretty, even though your odds is like above ninety percent, but you know it's pretty low. But then if you play table games, because each card is dealt independently, it's、mm-hmm. random.、Yeah. You may have a higher chance. Okay. To win, if you know how to play. But word of advice is, as you're playing, we are counting the odds downstairs too. So if you are counting the cards, we will catch you for sure because we know the probability for you to win in this situation t- twice in a row is near impossible. But if you did it twice, then you are on our watch. Okay, and then what happens? And then you take them out back and beat them. Then we have. Have a, you ever seen twenty one? We have a healthy <laughs> conversation with our player <laughs> about. Certain things that you should. Hey, I hear laughter out there. So, but, anyways, yeah. Okay, but have you seen Twenty One? Oh yeah. With, okay, is that is that real? That's. I mean, what do you do if you catch? That's onboarding video. Okay. Well, okay, but you catch somebody cheating. 
But is it, I mean, is it like, it's not legally cheating, right? It's just, they're just using a strategy yeah. that the casino says don't use uh -huh. and they'll kick you out. That's the worst that can happen. Or do they really beat you up like Vegas? Mafia I wouldn't next? say they'll beat you up, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say that it won't end up with security and the police department involved because we've caught so many people doing all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. And that's kind of part of my is job. Is it illegal though? Like the police will come out just to remove them from the premise or like to actually find them or Depends something? Depends on what happened. Okay. Like, it's What's the most elaborate scam you've caught? Oh my gosh. The one who... You're like, dang. Hold on, let me good. think if I can talk about this. I'm out of NDA. Just this one, we... This specific... Okay, this is based on true story, but I have to say it's loosely so I don't get in trouble. Secret Services got involved because certain bank, um, this case that their business credit card account information was leaked. So somehow... I don't know if I should. Okay, let's not go into detail because I don't, don't want people detail. to like don't copy this, right? Like, anyways, we we cut. <laughs> we can this. go off record later. Yeah, we can go off record, or you just cut it out. I'm just gonna say. It. So, <laughs> when we call this couple, they they are wanted in California and then in Nevada, and then when we caught them, Secret Service came in because of all that whole thing. But how they did it is, they, when we caught them, we found a ledger of credit card numbers mm -hmm. just and end up that trace back to this bank's you know like small business accounts and as a small business owner and to everybody out there listening accounting is not just to do taxes like make sure you reconcile scrub your expenses if not you open up a window for these people to do this to you so most of the time you don't really go in itemize and track like your dirty dog yeah. card do you know who charge on what you don't really know because there's so many small amounts, right? Mm -hmm. And because these people know that you don't really go in to check your expenses, and a lot of times you have your accountant do it, there's no communication. So if someone does get a hand of your car and charge something down in Mesquite, you won't find out. Yeah. Versus a personal card, mm -hmm. right? Because your wife is probably gonna be like, Bennett, where's the five grand go? Oh, why is there a casino, right? So they got all these numbers and then somehow they managed to get their hands on used credit cards, like bad. It doesn't matter if it works or not. So they have a bucket full of cars in their car. So what they do is they send down the number and the name, mm -hmm. demagnetize it, and then emboss their own name and pick a credit card number emboss it on there because it's demagnified. When you go into any store, a cookie, like a dirty uh -huh. dough store, buy a box of cookie, you swipe, hey, sir, this doesn't work. Oh, it's probably got demagnified. Here's my ID, right? Uh -huh. Could you just type in you the numbers? Check, yes, and you manually type. That's but then elaborate. When you, I know, when you manually process, the bank will only check authorization for the amount. It won't pull your car holder information. So all they can do is go by the car, which is the name you put on. <laughs> That's insane. To check ID, and it will always pass. Mm. So somehow we're watching those that couple for a couple months, and we just collect more and more evidence so how until much, we call them. What was, is it like anything below 50 bucks nobody's checking or like anything below a thousand dollars nobody's checking? It depends on how your company's policy okay. is. But they, well, they, I was just wondering like, what do, yeah, you, what do these for, scammers do? Oh, they started okay. out with Starbucks and gift shop, like grab extra mug or like little uh, things. And then and you just they started gradual. doing hotel rooms, steakhouses. And then we, we, if you go in casino, you see cameras everywhere. I can see everything, right? And I started seeing them bring in their parents and family to stay in the hotels and starting like the bill starting to roll bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, like five bucks coffee mug. At the end, it's like $1,200 when they leave. That's it's crazy. Me. It is crazy. When we call all them, that work, just, can't you yeah. just go sell something and make the same amount of money? I know, right? You're <laughs> like, that is really elaborate. Start a business like, with that money. Holy crap, you can yeah. make a lot of money with, they can own 25 dirty dog franchise with that kind of yeah. effort and work hard, right? But uh, yeah, they're instead they, they do that. Yeah, yeah, it's not like not smart. I mean, it's pretty smart to it's figure just, that uh, out. It's just do something legal with your <laughs> smart brain. Exactly. It's illegal. Yeah. So if not, we'll catch you. Um, I'm going to ask you some more about the casino. That's cool. <laughs> but <laughs> Off well, the record, let's focus on what we're here for. <laughs> yes. So, like so let's, let's, uh, you, you gave us a, a general like, hey, you know, I've done these, these things up to the art mm. um, teaching program that you have right now. Let's talk join fulfillment between the two jobs. How are you, depending on what job that you've had, how are you, you know, either happier mm -hmm. in that job and more fulfilled one job compared to the next? Yeah. And that's actually a perfect question to ask because people always ask me like or oh, it looks like in, it was fun catching people and all that stuff it was fun and seeing the kind of money coming through my desk and making sure we do better it's fun like mm -hmm. highlight of my life 
And of course, back in the days, I, I was walking on water. I was untouchable after all the stuff I did, right? And I was making good money. And they would think, well, you got your house. The car is paid off. You're making good money. It's a small town, low cost of living. Great, your job. Why do you even walk away with everything I built? Mm-hmm. And then it's really coming down to this fulfillment and finding joy. Yes, I find joy in what I do. But as I automate everything, I start to become a glorified babysitter. Because yep. I will walk in there at 8 o'clock. The numbers are done because I created the automation like 10 minutes all the numbers are in. And then they just did audit. It's done. And so from 8 to say 10, 11 o'clock, I review. By, ele- by noon, my job is done. Uh-huh. Then I have to babysit for 3, 4 hours every day for 2, 3 years. Mm-hmm. And then you're starting to be like... You lose the joy first. Mm-hmm. And then as you start catching all these people, um, the wake up call is the guy we caught, my kids play with his kids in the playground. So mm-hmm. it really hit me to say, I'm great at my job, but when I do my job, I'm putting some little kid's dad to jail mm-hmm. and ruin that dad's career, the kid's family. What am I doing here? Right. So as I start digging deeper, and at that time I had my third child, and it's kind of like a second chance for me because the other two, I was really busy working, never get a chance to watch them grow up. Mm -hmm. So it really hit me to say, if I'm going to walk away, now is the time. So when I realized that the choice became super clear. I had no motivation or desire to stay. I I want to find a better version of myself that I'm more available. And now my six, she's six now, like she's like my best friend, Mm -hmm. right? Like that is something money just cannot buy. Nope. Right. And that's kind of how I start to think about those things. You just ask more and more. And then the most important thing is just you got to take action to really make it happen Mm -hmm. because I could have stayed there. Do you feel like you're working? You spent more time with the six year old because you're working less than you were or just when you're not working, you're more present with her? (laughs) As an entrepreneur, you know, like you work more than anyone else. Right. Yeah. But the thing is, I actually asked my kids one day and say, do you like this? Like I'm working from home and I've been working from home for the past five years. Do you like me being at home? Cause you know, like you guys come in the room, if I'm working, I get mad or I get impatient. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer this or me working in the office and leave work at the office and come home? And they told me, I like having you at home. I was like, why? You want to get scolded? <laughs> They're like, no, at least you, I can see you. At least yeah. you're around. Like your presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you can, like, if the six-year-old comes in and show me her drawing, I can just pause and then look at it. But at work, I can never do that. Mm-hmm. And you feel like the grind just kind of eat your life away one day at a time. Yeah. I've been working from home for like three or four years. Do you and like our it? office is like four minutes. I can have an office there. But I, I, no, I like working from home. I like seeing my kids, but same thing, like, you know, like I'm on a call and, and my two-year-old will start banging on the, on the door crying because I'm an idiot and I put a glass door <laughs> Great. on my office, which is so dope. So now, he can, so now he could, anyways, yeah. no, that was a mistake. If he didn't see me, he wouldn't try to get in, you know, but oh, yeah. still overall, I'm like, oh no, I'm always going to do this. You're also and, too and, good of a dad. You're just, I, I you are playing a good with dad. the kids. You I just love, give him cookies? Oh yeah. That's a, <laughs> yeah. Just have <laughs> a cookie company. You're right. Now. <laughs> How old are your kids? So six is the youngest. Six. 12 and 14. Okay. It's, yeah, pretty fun and challenging at the same time. Well, what if we segue and talk about the biggest struggles in regards to mental health? We talked about the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, man, that it's a handful of something. So I started notice, noticing this a couple of years ago. Like there, And this is me personally. Right? Mm-hmm. Like as you become more aware of your not just mental health, like overall health or even just overall happiness, you start to notice things. And I noticed a couple of years ago, every year, the day after Halloween, I would have the deep, like I was in the darkest place mm-hmm. in my life ever. I wouldn't just mm-hmm. talking about like losing hope to live the next day type of thing. Really? And then I started talking to my wife and then I am I was aware of it. I'm starting to kind of be more open about it um, in this past two years. And she's able to help me out because There's one year that November 1st, that one day I'm just like, I'm done. I just can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's where she stepped in to say, why don't I take stuff off your plate and help you so you can actually breathe? Um, And then I found out it's more about, I grew up in Taiwan, right? Uh There's not such thing as Halloween, right? It just makes no sense. I don't know why you Americans like candy on one (laughs) day and just, no, I'm, Serious, like we don't get that whole Halloween thing. Yeah. And all my family there in Taiwan. So the biggest fun day for you guys turned into the most lonely day for me. Uh Even though I have kids and stuff, somehow 
I'm always stressed out. I didn't see the point of going and knocking on the door to get candy. If you want candy, I'll just buy you candy. Yeah. So to me, I don't get it. And I'll always stay home. And then seeing all the people out there with family and mm -hmm. I'm here all by myself and just that contrast mm -hmm. and the work stress just kind of create a gap and the gap just get bigger and bigger year over year. And um, luckily, I'm able to kind of get out of it now. I mean, still, it's hard. But when did you notice that? Yeah, that's some big awareness. 2020. Yeah, that I, I still remember. And, and was it happening yeah. before then, but you didn't really realize it was happening? And really yeah. what I'm getting at yeah. is I, also I want to know, how did you navigate that conversation with your wife? Yeah, yeah. To be open, to set that, you know, like, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. Because as like, as men, even if you're your spouse, it's like, I struggle with that. It's like, I don't want to share my struggles with my wife because I'm supposed to be the strong one. Yeah, so right. how am I supposed to tell her that That's I'm struggling? society pressure, right? Yeah. So how I noticed and then, so... We started Sentian in 20, 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of like making it work, making it work so well that you start getting paid and then support family, that pressure is already on. And then 2020, I still remember, I can tell, I close my eyes, I can see it. I just finished a online workshop. I drove up to Cash Valley, recorded the artist teaching workshop, brought home really great footage. I'm so excited. I want it. I got it all edited. Mm -hmm. That night I thought, and we got into Revro. So I thought if I go into Revro office, they have super fast internet, upload it real quick, 20 minutes done, go home trick or treating with the kids. End up when I got in there, somehow that one night the internet just didn't work. Oh, I no. ended up spending five hours that night in Revro all by myself, laying down on that blue couch, uh -huh. thinking everyone is out there trick or treating and I'm stuck here. And then just struck me like, is this the life I want to live in? This sucked. Like, and then, you know, like once you get to that dark place, just downward yeah. spiral super fast. And I was there alone by myself for five years. I mean, five hours. And I just couldn't do it on the Sorry. way home. I really didn't want to make it home. Mm -hmm. Right. And I kind of suck it up. Like you say, there's the pressure. You need to make it. You need to be strong. Suck it up. Next year, that's when COVID happens. Pressure got even, pressure got even higher. I mean, company is growing. So wait, wait, the first but, Halloween, that was 2019 then? Because no, COVID was 2020. No, so we launched September 2019. And then that first okay, episode okay, okay. is 2020. Okay. And then 2021, COVID was pretty bad. And um, that's when stress and everything will pile on me. So that Halloween, I was kind of like, I don't want to go out. You guys go out. And I'm just in that dark house. And of course, you don't want people to come knocking. So you turn all the lights off. Even more lonely thinking, instead of the road, I'm in my own house now. And you still can't find that comfort that you're Exactly. Seeking. How come my own safe harbor, my own home, I'm so lonely, I'm so dark. Mm -hmm. And that's when the next day or that next week, that whole first week of November, I was really just kind of like, this is so not worth it. And then turn into life is so not worth it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, when you're in that state of mind, you are not yourself. And of course, big fights happen. And then we just got into this really just ugly situation. And then she just really like, why are you doing this? Like, what's the deal? Um, and then through yelling deeper and deeper. And then we kind of realized I'm not going to make it. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to just stop. Cause at that point I'm like, stop trying. Right. I'm not, I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to make it. So whatever you want to do, do it. I won't be here tomorrow. And then she just really like, that is not what me and the kids are here for. Like mm -hmm. we, we want you. And because of that, just that little pulling you back to reality help a ton. And then we started talking and she realized actual state of mind is. And at that point, it's not about being strong or not. It's been about being survival or continuing yep. the next minute at that point. And then she said, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know anything about what you do at work, but I'm going to step in and I'm going to learn. You're going to teach me. I will start unloading. So you can actually just finally get above water from like 10 feet below mm -hmm. and then take that big <gasps> breath and then one breath at a time and then just go from there. And so that's kind of what happened um, from that point. We just kind of always make sure we have that open conversation mm -hmm. and just don't hide it anymore. That's awesome that you did that. And I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. I had an, uh, <coughs> just two weeks ago at your house after I went home and hung out with my wife anyways. And she'd shared that she's going through a hard time. And, uh, and I'm kind of just like, Oh, you know, how can I support you? But really inside, I'm like, I'm going through a terrible time. Like I'm done. Like there's so much freaking pressure on people needing me for mm -hmm. this or for that or for, and I'm just like, I, and as soon as I shared that with my wife, which I was like, I don't want to share that with my wife. Cause I'm supposed to be like her freaking rock, you know, but it had the opposite effect. It was, she was like, felt more comfortable and she felt more comfortable with herself. Cause I was like, baby, I'm having a, 
effing hard time lately. Like it's business has just been more stressful than it ever has. And as soon as I shared that with her, she's like, oh, I feel better about her own anxieties or depression or whatever. And uh, very counterintuitive because I didn't want to share that with her because I didn't want to, uh, I guess, show weakness. But she's like, oh, it made her feel, I guess, more normal because I'm yeah. also struggling with that. So yeah, that's that's awesome that you were able to share that with your wife yeah. and then that she had that much love and support for you to help you. And also we, what we realize is through COVID, life, life is hard for everybody. It doesn't matter yeah. if you have money, no money, business is growing, business is not growing. Everybody is struggling just because that's just the way it is. Like we never face stuff like this. And the children, they are facing even more struggle that we don't know. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing is we actually opened up and we started talking to our kids about stuff like this because my son, he was struggling with it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 14, is he the yes. oldest? Okay. There was a couple years, like he was probably 12 at around uh -huh. that time to a point where it was just not going well. And then we started talking about it and I come with my wife there. I confronted him, just keep pushing until he just broke down in tears and really just kind of like, <sighs> so I asked him like, what is the deal? Why are you always angry and stuff? And then keep pushing, pushing, pushing until the very last question is, are you trying to hurt someone? Cause I kind of knew what he's going through. Cause I have oh. the same thought. I said, are you thinking about hurting someone? He's like, I can't tell you, I can't tell you. So I said, are you thinking about hurting someone? And he just started, I can tell he's, I'm getting closer. And then in the end I say, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Uh -huh. And then he just completely melt down. And that's when I realized this is, out of control. We have mm -hmm. to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So at the, after that point, we would talk about stuff like this to just kind of like, are you okay? And then they kind of, the kids kind of know the parents are struggling. So together as a team, we are still, I'm not saying we are perfect. We're still struggling. We still have high and lows and But there's stuff. a, there's a, it sounds like but, there's a safe yeah. space to say, hey, dad, I'm having those feelings again. I'm having those thoughts again. Actually, he wouldn't say that, but he will act out. Well, but then and we, then you know to then go, we know, go right? ask him. Instead yeah. of like blaming them. And there's a lot of stuff we're learning too. But through that process, um, and I think it's pretty important for not just the husband to know, hey, it's okay to not be the strongest man in the world. And then vice versa. But also we need to remember the kids need us too. Cause mm -hmm. when they see us struggling, they're confused. They don't know what to do because they're supposed to look up to us. Like yeah. if we break down, what are they supposed to do? But turn out the kids turn into our best support system. Um, the little ones, she would write me notes and then they would just kind of like, even a tiny little hug, just kind of keep you grounded yeah. in reality. That's adorable. And I think that's really important as we are going through these things, just make sure don't hide it from the kids, include it include the kids and make it so that they are able to come talk to you about it mm -hmm. if they have struggles too. I'm curious. Right? I was just curious on your 12 year old, like have you talked to other parents or people in the situation and see what is happening with their kids as well? Cause I have to imagine this isn't isolated to your kid. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I, ha I have to imagine like this is an epidemic since yeah. COVID. Um, unfortunately there have been some episodes and even real just hard to deal with tragedies around where we are. Um, and we lost someone that is really dear to us because of some mm. of these situations. And then it's real, like don't think your neighborhood is so pretty and perfect. Like people yeah. are struggling and really don't just have that superficial, like, hey, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. If you don't feel good, how are you doing? I'm not good. I agree. Why do we hide? Or why do we lie about it, right? Mm. Like if we care about each other genuinely, if you're not doing well, just say, I'm not doing well. Oh, what's going on? Let's talk. I like really care about someone that's around you mm -hmm. and it will save a lot of lives. Yeah, being being vulnerable to say I'm not okay. Yeah. But also, well, you, you talked about your kid and um, I guess what, what advice do you have? Your oldest is 14 minus six. You're eight years ahead of me <laughs> oh in this my. parenting game. <laughs> so what, what do I do um, as I'm raising my kids to make them more aware of the challenges and allow them... Is it more me? I have to be looking for those cues and then asking the right questions. Is it more them waiting for them to come to me? A little mixture of the of both. Oh man, I wouldn't say I have the advice because I'm still learning. But one thing I did cover is this kind of conversation is just hard. Mm -hmm. How do you tell a six year old? She's my youngest is six, right? Yeah. So how do you tell a six year old what you're going through in a way that they can comprehend? So um, I started doing this. My kids, um, fortunately and unfortunately, the the big the older two, they have phones and thanks to, uh, I think it's Nate over at Gap Phones, right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. to Nate. We have some safe phones for the kids. 
But um, what I would do is I would just text my kids and say, I'm not feeling good. And they would ask me, are you okay? And just have, having that little check in, mm-hmm. open but up the you conversation. you being vulnerable with your kids. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to be, I'm dad, I'm all cool. I would just mm-hmm. tell my 12 year old girl and say, I'm not feeling good. Mm-hmm. And she would say, are you okay? And then she would kind of ask me. And then through that conversation, I get grounded. Mm-hmm. with reality mm-hmm. a, little, a little bit more. And then the little one too, I would be like, hey, I can really use a hug. She would hug me and I would tell her just kind of like, I don't feel too good today. And then she would just, she's sweet. She would like, oh, let me draw you a picture. Let me, yeah. whatever. Hey, let's go they make cake. Help, They're so sweet. They want, you're their dad. Yeah. You're their mom. They, they love you. They want to help you. And at the same time, when you are open to talk about the feelings like that, they will do the same thing. They'll say, hey, mom, I don't feel good today. Hey, mom, I have a hard time today. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Granted, they talk to mom more than me, but still, <laughs> they are talking about it. They are. Right? And a lot of times nowadays, it's that the fact that they cannot find an emotional outlet and then they seek approval or that kind of recognition to feel I exist, right? They seek that through social media mm-hmm. and that just gets worse. Yeah. But if you're able to be that real person in their life, for them to feel like it is okay for me to text my dad and say, I don't feel good now. Of course it's okay right? because you're doing that and they look up to you. So you're mm-hmm. setting the example of, hey, it's okay to share when you're not doing good. Yeah. And I've, I've seen that with not only the six-year-old because we're very open and talking about how we're feeling. And a lot of times both her and my four-year-old, both girls, they'll say, you know, my my day was bad today. Oh, why? Oh, because my friends didn't play. And rather than saying, oh, well, look at the bright side, I was like, oh, yeah, my day had a bad part, too, because of X, Y, Z. And I share it with them. And then they say, oh, that's cute. oh, but it was also good because of this. And I say, oh, well, my day was also good because of this. So it's every day at the end of the day, um, we'll do the, my For whatever reason, I don't know why my daughter calls it meditation. She goes, could we go do meditation? And I'm thinking <laughs> meditation. She really wants to go in the room, cuddle on the bed and talk about feelings. Oh, how she, wait, how she felt that way. Your girls do that? Yes, that, my girls do that. You, you made it, man. They're awesome. Like, they, it's they are, really awesome. The four-year-old there. likes to hang out. And I'm like, Lila, do you want to share? And sometimes she says yes. Sometimes she says no. The six-year-old wants to do it every day. And uh, anyways, I've noticed that difference when I started saying, rather than saying, like, I, I'm like, how do I form them to only focus on the positive? That was the wrong approach, I think. Mm-hmm. I feel the better approach is let's recognize the positive, but let's also recognize the negative and know that it's there. And then as me sharing, the, like, I had a bad day today because of this, and this person needed this of me, and I wasn't able to respond or whatever, I share that. And then she gives me instant compassion and empathy right. and hugs me and loves me. And then and then it gives her permission to do the same thing. So I love that, you, that you're doing that. I'm already seeing it. And, and, and this is very new, right? I mean, she's six years old. We've probably been doing this for less than a year. But man, it's 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 awesome. So I appreciate you sharing that. No, and thank thanks for asking because that that's the kind of stuff. I just wish people talk about this kind of stuff more. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't mind networking or some business events, or even sometimes there will be more like mental health oriented events. But again, there's always this society expectation, especially professionals. Like yeah. you will have that fear of. If I openly share about this, would people see me as mentally unstable? Would they not hire me? Would they? Yeah. Would I not get that important role because I'm struggling with something? And because of that, you actually just added another invisible pressure. Mm-hmm. So downward spiral. I know, right? right? It just gets worse. I need to hide my pain so other people can hire me. And because I'm hiding it, I'm not getting help, which makes me worse and mm-hmm. worse and worse. And then you're able, you're going to be a way worse employee. You know, even if you got the job because you lied or you hid things, then it's like, well, you're not a great employee because you're not open. You're not seeking help. You're not taking care of yourself. And your mind's not there, first. right? You can do the true you 100%. Yeah. So yeah, I think this is really great that you're doing something like this. Like just really open up and say, we are three guys sitting here as not emotional as we can be, but we talk about stuff yeah. as fuzzy as soft. <laughs> as as we, about, I mean, who cares if you make all the money in the freaking world if you're not happy? Like, screw okay. that. Yeah, screw, right. free, screw that. If you're yeah. not happy, your kids aren't happy, or your spouse isn't happy, then, yeah. then what was it for? You know, who cares? Um, talk to me about the business that you have right now. Mm-hmm. And again, tying it back into joint fulfillment, whether that be for you or for your customers. H- how do you feel like you're yeah. impacting people, whether it be positive, S- negative, or neutral? Okay. So um, when I started Sentient Academy, um, there's a backstory to that. When I was a kid at home, I was probably like graduating middle Taiwan is kind of like, oh, there's a lot of trade school type of thing. Okay. If you want to be an artist, you go to art trade school. Um, and it happened after middle school, you kind of pick your life path and go. So I said, I want to go to art school. Long story short, my dad was like, no, there's no way. And I just like punch a hole in the wall and just like 
fine. Mm-hmm. So I kind of did what they wanted me to do to be kind of get as close as I can to be a doctor. I got my sports medicine degree in Taiwan. Say, there you go. Check over the box. I'm done. And I left. And leave moved. me alone. Right? Like, <laughs> leave me alone. I moved here, pursue my art degree. But then um, I got married, fortunately. And unfortunately, it was 2008 when we ha- had our um, first kid mm-hmm. and oh, this is i know like nothing's happening back then and then i went back to school for accounting and that's where the whole casino thing career okay. happened and i kind of just packed the whole passion away thinking to be a dad responsible i should devote my entire 100 percent to the family and make money mm-hmm. i shouldn't have a life by the way it's not the right way to do it you gotta have a life deep inside kind of know i still love art so i would pack my art supply move with us for 15 years. And my wife always say, why do you still drag that old easel with the, with us every time we move? You can't let it you, die. Yeah, it's all dusty and one you will day. never do it. I'm like, one day, right? Like one day, one day I'm going to be that artist that I wanted to be. And then I met my co-founder, my son and his daughter are in the same elementary school classroom. Mm-hmm. And he's a pretty renowned um, artist locally in Alpine. And he showed me his work and I was like, oh my gosh, the fire just started growing in my stomach. And I still remember I posted on LinkedIn and said, I met my life hero. I really just want to quit my job and just paint pictures all day. Yeah. And then our um, VP <laughs> or whatever is like, no, you don't. And I'm the kind of person when you say you don't, I will. Yep. So I'm like, watch me, right? So I end up quitting and then started this thing. How many but days? How many days it's after? a while. I'm okay. not like dumb and just jump right in. I always have a plan, right? I plan everything out. But deep inside though, talking about joy and fulfillment, when I look to my look at my three kids, the youngest one should wake up and say, Dad, I'm an artist. I say, yes, you are. Mm-hmm. And then all three of them, the oldest one, he want to be a manga artist and he's freaking amazing. They want to be creative and they know it's okay to be creative. That's they awesome. know it's not wrong to believe in what they want to believe. They know it's not wrong 150% to chase what they love in this age. And I want to support that. And it's not just for them. Um, I'm actually asking myself, when I, throughout my career, I tell people like, don't bring me complaints, bring me solution. You want to complain about something, fine. Complain, complain. After that, I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do about it? So I ask myself, what am I going to do about it? If I'm in a position where I can make a change, would I do something to help that young Keith to change his life and turn his life around. I have an opportunity to do that. That's why I started Sentient Academy to say, you know what? I don't care if you're young, you're old, you decided to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or a franchise owner, whatever it is. If you want to pursue art and be a good artist and get better every day, you don't need to be the best artist and sell me a million dollars, but you're going to be a better artist every day. I'm going to be there for you. That's cool. And that's what we did. And our students, they love it because they feel empowered. And we actually have them coming to us and say, I love Sentient because you don't ever make me feel like I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. You don't make me feel like I need to be at a certain level before I can do anything. You make me feel like wherever I am, I can do it and I'm going to be better every day. And that's what we believe. And that brings a ton of joy, not just in their life and in my life too, to see that people can live fearlessly to chase their passion and the best thing about what we do is you can still be a doctor. And actually, we have a lot of students that are doctor lawyers and all that stuff because mm-hmm. they wanted to be, do this, yeah, but cool. their parents tell them to do something else, right? So they're able to continue to have a career, but with a very fractional cost, like a cost of a coffee a day you, or even less than that, you can pursue your passion. Yep. So anyway. That's awesome. <clears throat> so we have to wrap up here, yeah, but yeah. I want to summarize what you just said. I asked you, how are you impacting people? Um, with joint fulfillment and I, I kind of heard two answers one is your general customer you're empowering them it's come as you are whatever skill level you are and we'll help you whether you want to be professional or you want to do it in your your free time but here's a platform to help you pursue a passion or a dream and then number two which is the first thing that i heard is i'm showing my kids that i'm pursuing my dream and they can pursue theirs so i, I did i understand you on yeah both yeah and that is actually thank you for summarizing it um that is really what it is and yeah you say it better than me like i you should have been i'll switch you next time when you get <laughs> actually, on the podcast i'm your guest we'll look at each other um, and then you can <laughs> summarize <laughs> well it, i mean it was it was awesome having you on i really appreciate you yeah. driving all the way from alpine to lehigh how do we su- <laughs> so far, man, I have to take a flight. <laughs> How do we support you on this journey? You How just did. You? Like, I think just let more people know that if they want to chase that dream, 
there is a way, right? And it's not really, I did that not for money. Like mm -hmm. it's just something that's more like a passion project. I'm glad it went well and it's growing the way it is. Um, but um, that is just kind of like a part of the journey as I chase bigger things. Yeah. Yeah. So really, if you think, you say, oh, how can I help you? It's more about how can you help the people around you? Cool. With, with like Sentient, we finally upgraded the platform. Now we have a tons of free courses. For that reason, it's like we have a free level that is free for life. Anyone mm -hmm. who want to get started, um, you will want to just jump right in, just create a free account. You have a whole bunch of courses taught by professionals. Go for it. And really just kind of, if you want to learn to be a better doodler, they can doodle unicorns with your kids. Or I need to do that. I'm on. Come, come on with better Are designs for the. No, I suck at it, but I but it's fun. Yeah, like I did an art thing with my wife, and I would never do this, but <clears throat> we went somewhere in Salt Lake, and uh, you you have your blank canvas, mm -hmm. and you have somebody up there not telling you what you're drawing, and they say, "Put your first stroke two thirds down the way on this quadrant." Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, and at the end, I drew an elephant with a duck on its head in a bathtub with little and it was cool i have yeah. it in my office and i was like i suck at art it was so enjoyable yeah you know hanging out with my wife doing this little date and uh anyways super 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 fun so i'm gonna join your platform and i'm gonna cool. become a doodler a doodler a yes. doodler a doodler <laughs> Dude, i don't know I, i'm saying it wrong or what a doodler you know, like, doodler yeah doodler. Yeah. i just i'm a dude that doodles dude, yes. dude. You just hey, there's a new phrase. podcast right there. Dudes who doodle. Dudes and we just like doodle and chat. <laughs> Wait, Actually, that's a good that idea. That is a good idea. Okay, put it on the name list. Done. <laughs> Keith, gonna... so where, where do our guests find you? How do we, how do they connect with you? And just sentientacademy.com. Sentientacademy.com. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bennett. Thank you, Keith. What an amazing podcast. And uh, takeaways, be vulnerable and follow your dreams. I think we thank can you. all do that a little bit better. That's a wrap.